just as we let you go, I want to mention, I left a few of the historical characters out because you know most of them. As Matt said, Harry Houdini makes an appearance. Henry Ford at himself sells Coal House, his Model T. And there's one character, if you blink, you'll miss it. His name is Jim Europe. And I'm ashamed that I didn't include him in here, but it's one of those moments that comes so quick. We don't meet him, we only hear about him. Cole House is bragging about his stability, and he talks about how he's playing now with Jim Europe and his Clef Club Orchestra. That's actually a real person, too. It's to that degree that they made sure everything was, was going well. So that uh, Jim Europe was one of the finest African-American musicians in the first half of this country. You guys know who Ubi Blake is? Yes. Ubi Blake said of Jim Europe that he was the Martin Luther King of musicians. That's how strong a position he held. He was, I had always taught, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, this is that education thing they're talking about. I had always understood that Gershwin was the first experiment in jazz and the first time that anybody played jazz at Carnegie Hall. Wrong. It was Jim Europe. Jim Europe in 1911 took his orchestra from the Clef Club down to uh, Carnegie Hall and gave an, a, a concert and his orchestra numbered over 110 African American musicians. And he was the very first one to put jazz in Carnegie Hall. And unfortunately, that's too frequently a footnote in history. But I find that not only fascinating, but brilliant of the fact that it made it into this musical. So it's, you gotta listen for it, but it's gonna happen like that. And at the intermission, you can say, oh, did you hear them talk about Jim Europe? And everybody around you is gonna go, what? You're gonna seem so brilliant and worldly. It's gonna be amazing.